Hello, Zagaboo fans, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes with Zagaboo. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be reading you the second part of my book, The Legend of Zagaboo. Now, if you recall from the first part of the book, there was a little boy, and his name was Jack, and he was afraid of everything. He lived on a farm. Uh, he was afraid of the animals, and he was afraid of the dark. He was afraid of the woods. Well, he decided one day that he was going to carve a toy, and that toy ended up being Zagaboo. And Zagaboo helped him become brave so that he could do those things. But one day when he was going through the woods uh, with his daddy on their cart, Zagaboo got lost. And so that's where we are in the story right now. And I'm going to start from there, and then we're going to read the second part of the book. Um, at the end of the story, just like last time, I'm going to show you a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look. So you're going to get an idea of how we made the illustrations, so the drawings, how we made the words, uh, how we came up with the ideas. It's going to be great fun. So don't go anywhere. At the end of the story, we're going to have a lot of fun. All right. Are we ready to... Uh, to get started with the second part of The Legend of Zagaboo? If we are, let's all cheer! Yay! Come on, guys, you can do better than that! Let's cheer! Yeah! Oh! All right, we're going to try one more time. Are you ready? One, two, three, go! That's better! Here we go. The Legend of Zagaboo. Part 2 Zagaboo sat underneath some bushes for several hours until a gopher came by. The gopher was fascinated by the little troll. He thought Zagaboo smelled really good, like walnut. After a few twitches of his nose, the gopher picked up the troll with his teeth and carried him down a nearby hole. He took Zagaboo deep underground through a maze of tunnels, and into his favorite chamber, directly beneath the tallest tree in the woods. After circling a few times to find a good spot, the gopher lay Zagaboo down, curled up next to him, and fell asleep. He stayed with the little troll all through winter. At the start of spring, the temperature warmed up, the flowers bloomed, and the birds began to chirp. High above the tunnels in the branches of the biggest tree in the forest, thousands of special little creatures began waking up. Shelltop fairies that had nested in the tree throughout winter popped out of their cocoons and stretched their wings. As it did each spring, magic fairy dust fell from the many broken cocoons like snow onto everything below. The dust gave magical powers to all that it touched. The roots that absorbed the dust helped the tree grow, which explained why it was so big. The dust made the rabbits jump further, the skunks smell stinkier, and the gophers dig super fast. Normally the fairies would talk and play games in the tree after hatching. But that day, a big storm had rolled in, and the fairies raced into the woods to find shelter. The rain fell hard and long and washed the fairy dust into large puddles. The edge of one of the puddles overflowed into a nearby gopher hole, and a stream of magic water slowly began weaving its way deep into the underground tunnels, eventually reaching Zagaboo's chamber. The magic water pooled around the little wooden troll, and soaked completely into the fibers of his round little body and huge ears. Zagaboo began to glow green. Then he started to move, first with the wiggle of a finger, and then a toe. Before long, his arms and legs began to flop all around. Then in one quick motion, he sat up, startling the gopher. The little troll paused for a moment, tapped his head a few times to clean the remaining water out of his ears, and then turned toward the gopher. With a big smile, he said, Hello, my furry friend. What might your name be? The, 
the gopher looked at the troll and twitched his nose with curiosity. All right then, said the troll. I shall call you Twitch. My name is Zagaboo, and I need lots of wood. Will you and the other gophers help me? Twitch stomped his feet with excitement and raced off to collect the other gophers. Soon, hundreds of gophers returned with enough wood to fill the entire tunnel. Zagaboo was a great wood carver, just like Jack. Picking up a small, sharp stone, he dove headfirst into the wood pile, carving troll after troll. He made girl trolls, boy trolls, tall trolls, short trolls, trolls with long hair, trolls with no hair, trolls with big noses, and others with funny hats. Zagaboo carved thousands of trolls, each of them different except for their great big ears. When he finished, he dunked each of them into the puddle of magic water to bring them to life. The trolls and gophers gathered around Zagaboo to watch. After dunking the last troll, Zagaboo raised his staff with the purple marble and announced, I am Zagaboo, and I am very happy to meet you. Listen to me, and I will tell you a story about a boy named Jack. He told the trolls and gophers how he and Jack were best friends, and how he helped Jack become super brave. I discovered long ago, said Zagaboo, that trolls can help children learn how to do anything, how to dance, run, swim, read, fish, play sports, and not be afraid of the woods or the dark, plus many other things. Beneath this mighty tree we shall build a great magical kingdom, filled with fishing ponds, racetracks, dance halls, swimming pools, and enormous jungle gyms. Then we will invite kids from around the world, and they will have the most fun ever as they learn how to become brave and try new things in our kingdom. The gophers stomped their feet, and the trolls cheered with excitement, yeah! and they all happily started building Zagaboo's magical kingdom. Okay, that concludes part two of The Legend of Zagaboo. Stay tuned for a behind-the-scenes look at what we just read. Okay, uh, like I mentioned, we are going to do a behind-the-scenes look now at uh, what we just read, the second part of the first Zagaboo book, uh, The Legend of Zagaboo. I believe we are starting right here at uh, this page, uh, where Zagaboo and Twitch are together underneath the big magical tree, and uh, Zagaboo hasn't come to life yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and and take a look at uh, at that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what I've got on my computer. So here we go. Um, right here, these are the pages that uh, that I read to you uh, today, and we have a couple of two-page spreads. Now you'll recall that two-page spreads are something like something like this, right? Where uh, it's all part of the same picture, but it goes over two pages. One, two. And you can see here, uh, this is a draft that says D-R-A-F-T, and that means that it's not finished yet. And in fact, these words right here, I did change again, and you can even see that. Look, I circled over these couple of words here, and then I crossed them out. So in a later draft or a later version of the book, those words are not in there. So that was, that was a, uh, this is a draft. And so now you'll remember uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, those are the page numbers in the book. So these words go to those pages. So this might be page 10 and this might be page 11, that sort of thing. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these illustrations because that's really the fun part uh, about this. Um, so we're going to look at uh, the first illustration on the second part of the book, and that's where Twitch and Zagaboo are uh, in the tunnel for the first time. Twitch has picked up Zagaboo and taken him underground after Zagaboo got lost. Remember, he fell out of the cart while um, Jack was sleeping. 
and uh, he took them deep underground beneath the biggest tree in the forest. And this is where they ended up. Now you'll look here. Uh, this is the drawing that I made, and I gave it to my illustrator, Alan. And I said, yeah, I would like, uh, I would like Twitch to be laying here all curled up, and then Zagaboo laying next to Twitch, just like this. Remember, Zagaboo is still wooden in this part of the story. He hasn't come to life yet. And my illustrator did a really good job. This was his original sketch, like this. And uh, he, uh, he put Twitch on the ground, but then he had Twitch's arms sticking out like this, which I thought looked a little unusual, like uh, almost like he wouldn't sleep like that. When you see dogs sleeping, most dogs, you know, or uh, other animals, they have their, their hands next to each other or their paws. So uh, you'll see here in red, I gave an example of how I wanted the paw to look. Just like I had in my first uh, sketch right here, I said, uh, I said to Alan, looks good, but we need to open up the left side of the tunnel or the cavern. It is a huge cavern. Uh, with an exit in the distance. That means, see that, that little hole back here? That is an exit in the distance. And, uh, and then I said, uh, I want the left arm of the gopher up under his chin. And you can see I drew an example of that there. Uh, and I think that looks a little more natural uh, for the gopher. And so he did that. Now you remember, we needed to make the cavern big. We needed to make the tunnel big because... Uh, Eventually, Zagaboo carves all the other trolls in this part of the tunnel later on. And if the tunnel is too small, see it looks pretty small here, then he's not going to have room to do that. So we wanted to make sure we opened it up. So you can see these lines on top. I asked my illustrator to make the tunnel lines go all the way up like this to make the, make the tunnel look bigger. And so that's what he did. And this is uh, what it ended up looking like. You can see that now the tunnel isn't small. They're not in this little tunnel anymore. It's quite big. And you can see that he tucked uh, Twitch's arm back underneath his chin. And he looks a little more comfortable now, doesn't he? See, in this one, he's like, ah. In this one, he's like, you know, in the other one, he's like, oh, this is nice. On to the next one. Okay. So the forest canopy. This one was interesting. Um, I uh, I don't think we had actually come up with uh, a good look for the fairies at this time, so my illustrator uh, helped me come up with a you know a good kind of look for the fairies. Now the one thing that we did already know was that they are shell top fairies, so they have shells on top of their heads, and you can see that in this illustration. Uh, we've put shells on top of their heads, and that's what those are. And we actually get to see the shell top fairies later on a little closer in book number three, Charlie Diggs Dinosaurs. And this is pretty cool. So the, the fairies actually changed from how they looked in book number one to how they look in this book. Would you like a sneak peek? I'll show you. All right, here we go. Um... So here are the fairies in book number three. There you go. That's, that's a pretty good look at them. So this is the shell top fairy queen and all of her uh, other fairies that uh, are part of her kingdom. And of course, there's Zagaboo. And that's a little boy that's in uh, book number three. That's... Charlie for Charlie Diggs Dinosaurs. So that's a little sneak peek at book number three. I hope you guys enjoy that one too. Um, but uh, you can see that the, the fairies did change. Initially, to begin with, it was just these fairies here that I drew in pencil, and I wanted them all to be flying around. They have just popped out of their cocoons. So every winter, they go to sleep in their cocoons, and when they pop out, all of their cocoons open up and all the magic dust falls down below. You can see all these little stars. That's what that is. And you can see that here on this illustration too. And here's one big piece of magical dust and this uh, fairy is looking right at it. All right, let's go to the next one. 
All right, so uh, in this one, this is where the all that fairy dust fell from the trees and it was washed down into the tunnels underneath the, the biggest magical tree uh, and into the tunnel where Zagaboo was. And, uh, and that's where we are in this one. Now you can see here all these little stars. These are, these are the magic dust. This is the magic dust that's in the water. Now when we first made this illustration, we were having a tough time trying to figure out how to make it look like magic water. Because it just kind of looks, uh, in this picture, just kind of, I don't know, just like blue water. It doesn't really look magical at all. And maybe some uh, garbage in there or something. It's just some white dots. Anyway, my illustrator uh, told me, he said, if you want to make, I said, I want to make it look neon. Neon's kind of cool. It's like glowing. It's like, um, it's, it's, an, yeah, it's hard to explain it's, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, like when you look in a sign in a restaurant and it's got a big glowing sign in there, that's a neon sign and it, and it glows. And he said, well, if you want it to look like that, you have to add more white to it. So that's what we did. We added a lot of little specks and then we made some glowing white around the specks. And this is what it ended up looking like when it was done. So now you can see that uh, the glowing light uh, coming up from the water is making it look magical. And that was important because this is where Zagaboo comes to life. And we really wanted to make sure that uh, you guys believed that this was magic water that was getting all over Zagaboo. So here we go. We're going to move now to the next scene where he actually does come to life. Ta-da! All right. Well, uh, this was a, a fun one. We really kept the same scene as back here. So it's actually basically the same picture. But what we did was we took out the wooden Zagaboo here and we put in the living Zagaboo. And he's coming out and he's saying hi to Twitch for the first time. Remember, Twitch was startled by Zagaboo when he came to life because first he started moving with the wiggle of a finger and then with a toe. And then he finally came to life and he walked out of the water and he said, hello, my furry friend, what might your name be? And Twitch twitched his nose and chattered his teeth. And that's when Zagaboo decided to call him Twitch. And, uh, and so in this picture, I think uh, Zagaboo looks great. His toes look really big, though, don't they? They look like big, puffy um, grapes or something. All right, on to the next one. Okay, now this is what we call a two-page spread again. Now, a two-page spread is basically a picture that goes over two pages of the book. Now, that's what we've got right here. We've got one, two, two-page spread. And that's what you're looking at here. See that line that goes right down the middle? That line that goes right down the middle? That uh, represents this, the spine of the book. Now, in this picture, uh, I've got a few trolls that are being carved here. Uh, and I made them kind of blocky looking because they're still made out of wood. Right? Zagaboo hasn't dunk dunked any of them into uh, magic water yet. And of course, here are the gophers in the distance. They're coming in out of the tunnel uh, and they're bringing in all of this wood so that Zagaboo, who's a great wood carver, just like Jack, can make many, 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 many more trolls. Thousands of trolls, all of them different, except for their great big ears, if you remember. And so that's what all this is over here. And my illustrator uh, did a draft. Remember, a draft means practice picture and uh, and that is right here on this next slide and uh, we can see that it's not done yet uh, however we do have Zagaboo he's there carving a troll out of a piece of wood he's already carved one right there and we have one gopher that's bringing in some wood so what I had to do was I had to explain uh, to my illustrator I said well I want Zagaboo actually looking at the, what he's carving because it looks a little weird if he's carving like over here and he's looking at you so I said no no I want you to look at what you're carving 
And so he turned his head. And in fact, he did something pretty cool. He stuck out Zagibu's tongue, too. He's like this. Mm. I'll show you that in a second. And then, um, and then we had to add a bunch more trolls, too. So, and gophers as well, because this is a big operation. They're making thousands of trolls. And so, uh, so anyway, this is what it turned out to be. A two-page spread. So this is one side, one page, and this is the other page. You can actually kind of see a little bit of a line down the middle. Uh, and that's uh, because I had to take the two pictures and stick them together like that. But um, you can see, remember I told you Zagabu has his tongue sticking out. I think that looks pretty cool. And we've got some more gophers now. Look, one, two, three, four gophers uh, bringing in lots of wood. And now we have more uh, trolls made of wood. And look, the trolls are so different. That was really, really important to me because people are different. We've got uh, big people, small people. We have people who uh, are different colors. And I wanted that to be the same for all of the trolls. And so we've got some big ones and some little ones, and they're all made out of different kinds of wood. Uh, and the, like I said, all different except for their great big ears. And so uh, we finished this illustration and we went on to, let's see, illustration. This is the last one that I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, this is the one where all of the trolls came to life. And Zagabu raised his staff with a purple marble and says, let me tell you about a boy named Jack. Remember that? And all the trolls were super excited. And he says, we're going to build a great magical kingdom. Get started. And so all the trolls that they, he had just made uh, out of wood and dunked into the magic water to bring them to life, they started building Zagabu's magical kingdom. And they're all very excited. Uh, and this, is, uh, this was the first drawing of that. We were going to put... Uh, the words on the top and the bottom, but like I told you from last week, uh, we just kept all the words on the bottom. Let me see if I can find that page for you real quick here. And here we go. That's it. We kept all the words on the bottom. It just makes it easier to look at. Um, plus, uh, not just easier to look at, easier to do. So I was a bit lazy not being able to do uh, the other two sides. It would have been just too hard. Would have looked a little funny too, I think. So anyway, I just skipped over that. Uh, all right, I don't want to talk too much about that because that's not important. Uh, next, this was the draft. So remember the practice drawing uh, before we colored it of Zagaboo and all the trolls after they came to life. And you can see they're all different, right? But we don't have any color in here. And we also don't have all of the trolls. Remember, I have a picture in my illustration. I've got thousands of trolls. Look, you can see them all back there. Oh, let's see them, all those little, little figures back there. We got some in the front, and then we got a bunch in the back. So we needed to add a bunch of trolls. And we actually pulled out a little bit of artistry magic to do this. Uh, so here's the final illustration. And you can see that we've got some of the trolls in the front and we can see those guys really well. And then here we've got a gopher and then we've got some more trolls over here. And this is Winko actually, she's the swimming troll. She's in book number two, Maddie Swims Troll Style. Uh, but in the back, the trickery that I'm talking about is we needed to see that there are thousands of other trolls. Uh, but you know, we didn't wanna draw a whole bunch of them because that would have taken my artist a long time uh, and, but we wanted to still show that there were thousands back there. So what we did was we put them in the back and we shaded them out. And you can see it looks like there's thousands of trolls back there, but you can't see them all perfectly. But you can see kind of their hands sticking up and all of that. Uh, and that's why we did that. Uh, and here's Zagabu, you know, he's telling everybody to get to work because uh, uh, he needs to build Zagabu's magical kingdom because they're going to help kids learn how to read run, swim, fish, play guitar, uh, spell, anything that they want to do. you got special trolls for everything. Like I said, here's the swimming troll, and then uh, here's the spelling troll, and then you've got all these other kinds of trolls. I think this one might be the football troll. I don't know yet. haven't made up all the books, but uh, all kinds of trolls. So anyway, uh, thank you for coming with me on this journey through uh, the behind the scenes look at Zagaboo. It's been a lot of fun and uh, come back for reading number three 
of uh, The Legend of Zagaboo, part three. We're going to do that. I'm going to read you the rest of the book, and uh, when we're done, um, and then I'm going to do a behind-the-scenes look at that for you as well. Anyway, have a great day. Remember to tug your ear and say the magic words. Zagaboo, Zagaboo, where are you? And I'll see you next time on Behind the Scenes with Zagaboo. Zagaboo, Zagaboo, where are you? Tug your ear and he'll be there. Zagaboo, Zagaboo, where are you? Tug your ear and he'll be there. Home to go for